From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Breaking news, the standoff is over. Police arrest a murder suspect after several tense hours in Billings. We were able to come to a peaceful resolution. Plus, we'll look into why Billings Animal Shelters are taking in more pets than they're giving away. It's harder in the wintertime. We have less housing here because we can't keep the dogs outside. And a Hollywood special effects artist is giving back to his Montana hometown. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this January 9th, 2022. Thank you all for joining us. Lots to get to, but off the top, breaking news here in Billings. A seven hour long standoff ends overnight with a murder suspect finally in custody. No police were hurt, arresting the man who had been barricading himself inside a house on 12th Street West since six o'clock last night. Police believe he's responsible for multiple crimes. Q2's Jackie Coffin has been following the situation from the beginning and brings us the very latest. After seven hours, a police standoff with a man barricaded inside of a residence off of 12th Street has ended. It's about 1.30 in the morning and you can see emergency personnel and law enforcement breaking down and leaving the area after a very long night. Streets closed and SWAT teams deployed. Multiple agencies responded to a string of crime scenes up and down 12th Street. A man armed and barricaded inside a house on Burlington and 12th and refusing to come out after police say he shot and killed another man on the north side of Grand between Avenue E and Avenue F, stole the victim's car and drove down 12th Street at high speeds, crossing Grand and smashing into several cars in front of Big B Bingo, then running into a nearby house, shooting and injuring a person inside who was trying to flee. The man shot and injured trying to leave the house was taken to St. Vincent's Hospital. He was shooting out the window about uh, about 30 minutes after the incident. Uh, we don't know what he was shooting at yet. The whole incident happened at about 6 p.m. Sunday, but it wasn't until seven hours later around 1 a.m. Monday that SWAT team members were able to enter the house after deploying gas and scanning the area with a bomb squad robot locate the man in a basement room and take him into custody without injury to the suspect or law enforcement. I would I would say that it speaks to the amount of skill and the training that the, that the SWAT team and negotiators and our bomb guys have uh, and the equipment that we're able to utilize. The pieces are still coming together. Firefighters say they initially were responding to a call of a shooting at a birthday party, that being the house on 12th and Burlington, where the suspect forced his way in and shot the person fleeing. Uh, and in this situation, it worked out to our benefit that, that we were able to come to a peaceful resolution and, and get this individual secured and off the streets. Law enforcement grateful that the standoff ended the way it did. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Thank you, Jackie, for following that. Billings police issued their first official communication about the shooting and the barricaded suspect about two hours after officers officially responded. That tweet included a warning for the public to stay out of the area. Billings police began encrypting their scanners on November 15th, they say, to enhance officer safety. Now it's time to get a quick check of the weather with Miller. We're looking at a different sort of week, Miller. Yeah, another week where we're going to stay above average. A above bit of a, average. A, a bit of a speed bump tomorrow. If, you, if you're dying for some rain, snow, well, we may have you covered. And we'll tell you about that with the main forecast here in just a bit. Great shot of the mothership there in the background. Uh, yesterday, look at that. Above average with our highs and our lows. And that's kind of what we're facing down as we go along this week. I had a top gust yesterday of 32 at the airport. We're seeing some strong winds this morning. Uh, the Beartooth Foothills, Livingston Eye, Big Timber Corridor there could see gusts in excess of 50 miles an hour this morning. So just keep that in mind. It's been a very dry start to the brand new year. Moisture uh, totals and our snow totals all in the deficit column and it's affecting our snowpack. Now you can see some areas there shaded in green, some areas above 100%, some areas well above that milk. Uh, at 138%, Madison at 128%, 110 there in Gallatin. But the thing is, all these numbers have come down since the last update, and we don't have a lot of moisture in the forecast moving forward. Now, models seem to indicate there could be a change of the pattern as we get into the weekend into next week, where more of that moisture will come into play. It's what the current snow depth looks like right now, visual there for you. Temperatures out there right now, we've got 34 in Billings, feels like 25. Winds out the southwest at about 12 miles an hour. 20s and 30s as we get up and at them this morning. Our highs today, 30s and 40s. 
staying above average with a good bit of sunshine, but you'll see coming out of the corner of your screen there some snow coming in. We'll tell you where that's going to hit coming up here in just a bit. Okay, Miller, thank you so much. You we'll check it. back in with him in a few. Right. Happening today, President Biden begins a two-day trip to Mexico City for the North American Leaders Summit. It's his first trip there as president, and this morning reporter Joe St. George explains how it could impact the situation at our southern border. Mexico. America's neighbor. Political relations, though, between the two countries haven't always been neighborly. For instance, the president of Mexico boycotted a meeting in the United States last year, which is why President Biden's visit there is one to watch. It's easy to dismiss this meeting in Mexico as not being important or not impacting your community. But you'd be wrong. Mexico impacts what's going on at our southern border greatly. Remember, a record number of illegal crossings have happened in recent months, and mayors from Denver to New York have declared a state of emergency as a result. Many migrants, especially from the Northern Triangle in Central America, first cross through Mexico before they attempt to enter our country. If Mexico restricts migration more at its southern border, many experts say the situation at the U.S. border may improve. The actions we're announcing today will make things better. That will be part of President Biden's pitch in Mexico starting today, and it comes after several days of announcements involving the border. President Biden visited the border for the first time as president Sunday. Last Thursday, he announced a change in policy to discourage migration from many Central American countries, including Cuba. From Cuba uh -huh. to Nicaragua. During a recent visit to the border, we were struck by how many migrants that we met originated from there. President Biden's new rule give Border Patrol more flexibility to immediately expel migrants from Cuba unless they follow proper protocols to enter the U.S. and seek asylum. This man was trying to make it to Florida, and he believes he can work in the food industry. If I can work in a restaurant, I like working in the kitchen. The last time President Biden and the president of Mexico met, Mexico agreed to pay the U.S. $1.5 billion to offset their lack of border security. It's unclear if any similar announcements will happen this time. Apart from the border, other issues like how to increase the production of computer chips across all of North America will be discussed, as well as ways to increase clean energy and help the environment. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of Canada will also join the leaders for what has been affectionately called the Three Amigos Summit in recent years. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Other headlines this morning, violent political unrest in Brazil. Supporters of former President Jair Bolsonaro Bolsonaro stormed the nation's Congress, Supreme Court, and Presidential Palace, took hours for authorities to reestablish control of buildings in Brasilia, the nation's capital. Bolsonaro is refusing to accept his recent election defeat. The country's new president, known as Lula, accused Bolsonaro of encouraging the uprising by rioters he called fascist fanatics. Now closer to home, a Billings Animal Shelter is filling up. Drop-offs, outnumber adoptions, and aging facilities make caring for these animals especially difficult. Q2's Charlie Kleps looks at why more people are abandoning their pets. It's a regular sight here at Help for Homeless Pets. Employees coming into work and finding animals tied to this bench, abandoned by their owners because they no longer want them. It's led to a full shelter here, and the owners are working hard to find these animals new homes. In their 20 years of existence, Help for Homeless Pets director Angie Cook says they've never been in the position they are now. We've never really been in such a position that we had to turn ones down. The no-kill shelter is taking in more animals than ever, a change Cook attributes to the COVID-19 pandemic, among other things. When people are going back to work or get, you know, they're, you know, there's a lot of people like moving and things like that. We've seen a bigger surplus of animals coming in. It's left the shelter hard pressed to find room for the animals, especially during the winter. We've had a waiting list for quite a while with people that want to surrender, need to surrender. It's harder in the winter time. We have less housing here because we can't keep the dogs outside. Shelter operations manager Ashley Burling says they are still completing plenty of adoptions, but animals are being dropped off at their front door leaving them with no option but to bring them inside. Drop-offs including, you know, tying them to the front door before we open, shoving kittens through the door before hours, leaving them out in boxes. The nonprofit is now trying to fundraise so that they can improve the kennels and allow more animals inside. A big change and one they say is well overdue. The dog kennels we use are well over 20 years old. A lot of them we have to patch them and repatch them, but you can only patch them so much, you know, and it, it's definitely time um, for the safety and well-being of the dog. And at the end of the day, their primary focus is on keeping the animals comfortable at their shelter. 
for what they hope is always a short stay. It's a roller coaster of emotions because you've got people needing to bring them in. Every single time an animal gets to go home, that's the best thing here. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. National headlines this morning. California's governor now requesting a presidential emergency declaration to support the state's ongoing storm response. This is as thunderstorms, snow, and damaging winds are sweeping the northern part of the state. Look at all this footage. We've been talking about this for the past week. All this raising the potential for mudslides. Governor Gavin Newsom says at least 12 people have been killed. And some of your favorite movies might have looked a little worse if it wasn't for a man born and raised in Laurel. Bobby Brooks is a special effects expert. He's worked on some of Hollywood's biggest films, and now he's bringing his talents to a film playing at his hometown theater, The View and Brew. Q2's Haley Monaco has his story. If you're by The View and Brew, you may notice a new movie poster for Sanctified, a Western filmed in North Dakota with special effects like this done by a man right here in Laurel, Montana. By day, Bobby Brooks works full time at the Stillwater Mine, but on the side, one fire. He runs second unit action, a special effects business. So don't be alarmed. The arrow you see sticking out of his grandson, Hunter, is just one of the many things Brooks can do on the big screen. Everything from little tiny explosions all the way to big ones. Starting back in the 80s as a movie extra, Brooks later found his passion for special effects. First one was Rambo 3, where I actually helped the special effects crew. And now he's worked on hundreds of productions. He has a partner down in Lovell, Wyoming, and together they can make magic happen. Between he and I, if we team up on a show, we can pretty much do anything. They both worked on Sanctified, a film based on the 1880s Badlands lawlessness. Here's a behind the scenes look at one actress in the film appearing to be shot. You guessed it, that was done by Brooks. Excited to bring it into Laurel here so everybody could check it out. But it isn't all about showcasing his work. Theaters have never been hurting like they are now. You know, it, uh, people just don't flock to the theaters much anymore. So, so it's important that we need to do some of these premieres, you know. Helping out a local business, one so important to his career. I would like to see the theater start filling up. That would be great. In Laurel, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Thank you, Haley, for that report. And before we take a break, it's time to meet this month's awaiting child. Q2's Diane Parker introduces us to Marissa, the 15-year-old artist. This month, we're in Billings to meet Marissa. She loves to play volleyball, be social with her friends, and arts and crafts. She's artistic. She's very creative. She's easy to get along with. I don't hear any negativity from her, even when I hear her story. With Marissa's love for animals, she'd love a family who also loves cats and dogs. I like dogs, cats, squirrels, birds, anything. I like all the animals. I have a really big heart for animals. Their face just like warms me up in the inside. Just like any other child, she's not perfect. She's still learning, learning her path. Um, learning where she fits even in a family. I think any family would love to have her. I just know she's a lovely girl. More than anything, Marissa is hoping to find a loving forever family. A good family is, to me is loving, caring, and trustworthy. In Billings, Diane Parker, MTN News. To learn more about Marissa and other children awaiting adoption, visit ktvq.com and search Awaiting Child. We have some new information coming right now into our newsroom. The Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office is searching for a missing 77-year-old woman in Billings. Here's her image. Sherry Richterreich has dementia. She was last seen walking away from her home around 1 a.m. this morning. Sherry is wearing a blue striped jacket, blue jeans, blue tennis shoes, and glasses. Again, this is her image. She's on foot and there is concern for her safety. If you have any information about Sherry, please call the Yellowstone County Sheriff's, Sheriff's Office. 